Hi, I'm Sally Glass and welcome to episode 175 of Art This Week. On this week's episode, we visit Fort Worth Contemporary Arts and speak with Matthew Collings, one half of the collaborative team Biggs and Collings, about the exhibition Suspicious Utopias. Now for Art This Week. When me and Emma, when me and Emma Biggs are painting, Fussiness is basically what we're doing. Yeah. We're getting down one color and then another color near it and then another color and another color, another color far away and we're gradually building up to that one and coming back and changing that one. And basically we're just sort of fussing and fussing and fussing and fussing until there's a believable unity to all those differences. Oh, that's awesome. How do you guys like discover like what colors? Like how does that decision process happen? There's a very strict division of labor. All the color comes from Emma all the colour ideas. She thinks up a colour and she thinks where it will go. Okay. And she never paints and I never think up the colours or think where they will go. I always paint. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's because really the final product is very, very complex and intricate and it would be chaotic if we were both painting or both thinking up the colours. But it's also because she's got a, an experience and a sensibility and a mindset geared to colour far more than mine and I've got a set of faculties geared more to painting that is relatively crude about colour so we accept the difference between us and we allocate each other the jobs that are going to make the overall job be most efficiently done. Well that's awesome, it's like a perfect pairing. When did you guys sort of discover that per perfect pairing? About 15 years ago we got together as uh, partners about 16 years ago and within roughly a year we started realizing that if we collaborated because Emma's a mosaicist mm -hmm. and she'd been doing mosaics for years before then she continued to do them and I'm a writer and an art critic and I write art books and I make films about art but I've always painted as well mm -hmm. and when we met I realized that there was something in what she did with the colors in her mosaics that my paintings were missing and needed and so I started asking her advice, mm -hmm. and as I say, it was about 15 years ago. She would advise me, and then I realized that her advice was so effective that actually it was the heart of the painting, and so that we should, we, we could try doing it together. We would make ourselves equal mm -hmm. in a kind of double act of painting, mm -hmm. which is an odd thing that, you know, there are double acts and groups who produce contemporary art, but not very much painting, and certainly not painting which is very, very visual and a very, intensely visual. So you've got a combination of what seems to be computerized uh, imagery and then hand painting. How often do you sort of cross those worlds? In Never. Movies? This is an experiment. Oh. In fact, the whole show is divided into three different types of things. A manifesto, because that's what artists have got to do. There's a wall text, a giant wall text, which is our manifesto. Okay. An experiment, because good artists should experiment and that's this, and our basic work. That's, uh, there's one painting here, but when the show opens, there'll be two paintings. So our basic work is oil paintings, colored abstract oil paintings. So this is an experiment where we're looking at the issues that we deal with in our paintings, but we're looking at them in a slightly different way than we normally do, so we reduce the color right down. There is color there, but it's a very, very reduced color. Um, we're interested in, you know, our work has very much to do with different qualities of surface. So we've exaggerated the difference of surface in that, as you observe, some of them are digitally generated prints mm -hmm. and some of them are paintings done on paper and we're putting them together. And then we've taken the quality of very bounded shapes that we have in our paintings and we've made that a bit more complex. Instead of just triangles, there's also circles as well as triangles. And there's stretched out triangles and sort of square triangles or, or squares that are tipped on the side to become triangles or diamonds. How often do you usually take up like the expanse of a whole gallery for your Never. manifesto? So has this been sort of like a fun thing yeah, to play with? It's, the whole thing is much more um, discursive than we usually do. We usually would have a catalogue which could well be playful with images and text. And we might quote Karl Marx or we'd show images from art history. We would um, have a few sort of uh, pithy comments about what art is. We might show some photos of uh, nature or photos of the 
shapes, sides of buildings. We'd say all this goes into our work, but that would be a catalogue. And then our exhibition would be an intense load of our painting, so you're kind of overwhelmed by colour and light. Mm -hmm. And here it's almost the other way around. So the, the great area of this very large space is taken up with words, and a much smaller area shows our paintings. And it's just, it's just an experiment, but it's also the fact that there's a university attached to this gallery, mm -hmm. and uh, we want... Um, we want it to be a sort of didactic experience as much as it is an aesthetic experience. I'm trying to think of the right word for it, but like you walk in and you see all the text and stuff, you can't help but just like stop and just like sort of be taken in by it, which is really cool. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, the text is also a coloured text, mm -hmm. so it has a visual element. It's also it's divided up, divided up into different colours. So we, one thing we like in art history is. Uh, Christian cathedrals that are decorated, every square inch of the surface is decorated somehow, and Islamic mosques, which are also decorated, but an Islamic mosque is all patterns, whereas the frescoes and mosaics in the cathedral in the medieval ages is patterns plus imagery, symbolic images. But we like that wall-to-wall -wall overwhelming visual effect. So for all that we're expanding our act in this show, we've tried to keep a color flicker pulsing throughout the gallery. Yeah. So you could choose to get involved in that text very closely and try and understand what it's saying. Yeah. Or you could just see it as something visual. You know, there's uh, elements from our paintings, those colored triangles. Mm -hmm. There's different colors, beautiful grays and off colors flickering through the whole thing. Or even thinking that the lines of type are sort of are a formal element as well. So you don't really have to be intimidated by the intellectual ideas of this text, but if you want to get involved with them, yeah. it is a pretty interesting read. You know, as some guy uh, years and years ago published an article that criticised me. It's been on his website for 12 years, and I thought it's fair enough, he has a right to criticise me. But I thought for this show, why don't we take that article and interrupt it all the way through with our own ideas, me and Emma's ideas about what our paintings are about. So we're going to address his article, say where he's wrong and where he's maybe sometimes right, but then take the whole thing as a sort of platform for our own manifesto, where we present an artist's manifesto of what are the ideas that make our paintings tick. And so that's what we've done. But this is really the, this painting and another painting that's being stretched at the moment is going to be brought in. This is really the heart of what we do. It's a sort of very um, complex decorative art which at the same time as being visually pleasing has a sort of intellectual element. You know, you're not just the passive receiver of this painting, you're kind of engaging in making the rhythms yourself. Mm -hmm. It sets up a lot of configurations, but they're multiplying and multiplying and syncopating like rhythms in music. And you pick out, when you're looking at it, you're sort of picking out um, configurations, say the configurations made by all the orange elements or configurations made by all these browny grey elements and you're noticing the different register between the high sharp colours and the much more muted grey colours or noticing the tonality so that each colour is presented in a version of light and dark and then noticing also that the greys or the muted colours are actually iterations or different versions of the high colours so they're not just neutral greys, they're very active, dynamic ones. So this thing is buzzing around and making itself. And you as the viewer are receiving a kind of pleasure from the painting, but you're also receiving a sort of message about how pleasure is made, why it is that we take pleasure in abstract structures, and why human beings seek out a structured environment. We want to thank Matthew for speaking with us. More information on the team can be found at emmabiggsandmatthewcollings.net. More information on the exhibition and the gallery can be found at theartgalleries.tcu.edu. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your polar